Hello. Let's let's have a look at Unicode and UTF-8. So, if it works, uh, hmm. okay. So, in the beginning, it was chaos. There was there were several different way to encode characters. Well, there still are, but they were actually used. Uh, for example, a very funny one was the Bodo code, which was five bits. That means that uh, it, it, it was stateful, so there was a special code to switch to, for example, numbers instead of letters. Um, the famous um, EBCDIC from, from, from IBM, and then ASCII 7-bit, which was actually considered pretty modern at the time. Um, obviously, with seven bits, you cannot do that much. Uh, the idea of putting both uppercase and lowercase letters in, in the same um, uh, code uh, were, was really considered innovative. Um, so, yeah, it was not that nice. So they decided to make it worse. So basically, okay, ASCII, we have the standard English alphabet. Uh, what about other alphabets which require more letters? So they invented this thing called code pages. So basically, you would use eight bits instead of seven, and you would use the higher part uh, of the code space for the special characters. This means that uh, the same code would uh, represent you different special characters depending on the uh, character set used by the person receiving the the, the text and of course you uh, anybody could only use one set of special characters at a time you could never mix up for example a, a character only found in one special character set like for example the German S set with uh, I don't know a Russian letter so meanwhile in Japan they had Gs and Shift Gs, so basically they could uh, represent multiple alphabets at the same time. Uh, they could represent all the official Japanese kanjis. Uh, characters could be one or two bytes long. Uh, they had a first, uh, um, a first um, code page, basically a first um, code to represent just the syllabic um, Characters and then they extended it to represent, and that was, uh, and there one byte was enough. And then they extended it to represent everything else, and then they needed more, of course. Um, the funny thing is that it, there was no way to know if a given byte was a continuation of a longer character uh, or the start of a new character. So, in case of errors, or if you needed to search backwards, uh, you were screwed, basically. Also, it did only represent a subset uh, of, the all, of all the uh, alphabets used in the world anyway. So, yeah, let's make a new standard, right? Let's, let's make a new standard that covers everyone's use cases. Um, so they invented Unicode. So the idea is, okay, let's represent um, abstract characters with abstract numbers. Uh, let's cover all the languages. Oh yeah, 16 bits are enough, right? Um, and it seems to be something cool, so everybody implements it, or well, everybody, most, um, the most influent at the time companies, and sadly also now, but uh, implement it. So, that's why you find that, for example, in Java, characters are 16 bits. In Windows, uh, characters are 16 bits, the wide characters, anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, 16 bits are not enough. Let's expand it afterwards. So let's expand it to, to this comic number. It's not even a power of two. Um, it's 17 times 64K. Um, uh, so basically, two bytes are not enough anyway. Um, so as of now, uh, version 6.1 defines uh, 110,181 characters. Yeah. So that's why 
it never works. Um, no, there is more. I will not talk too much about all that stuff. I will just say that uh, there is a specific. There are specific rules in the Unicode standard. So it, the Unicode standard is not just a set of characters. There are so specific rules, for example, for collation. So how to sort characters, depending also on the locale. For example, the lowercase i uh, has different uppercase versions. Depending, for example, if the locale is Turkish, then the uppercase i is the uppercase i with the dot above. And the lowercase of the standard i is the lowercase i without the dot, because that's the way it's working in, Tur in Turkish. So you need to uh, properly take uh, care of that. Then complex capitalization rules, case mapping and case folding. So things like uh, the same letter has two different uppercase variations, depending if the thing is full uppercase, like in the middle of a text, or if it's the first letter, uh, which is uppercase and the rest is not uppercase. Um, and case folding, like you search for something and you want to write, for example, the German SZ, and you want it to match also a double S. Then um, you can compose characters. Uh, there are specific characters that are just um, modifiers, so accents, for example, that are supposed to be put over other characters. Uh, there are specific rules on how to compose which letters, which characters together, and which is um, the resulting character. So sometimes there is a resulting character that is pre-composed, and how to compose back. So if you have a specific character with accent, how to get the accent and the base character to, to, to compose it back. So ligatures like fi, the, 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 the thing that always works, um, in, for example, in LaTeX, but it's also defined in Unicode, and the fact that that's actually an F and an I, so again, like case mapping, right to left, and stuff like that. Um, one thing which is quite important is that um, the Unicode standard does not uh, define uh, glyphs, so not does not define how the character appears, but only uh, the abstract character being represented. And if you want a different representation, you use a different font. So for example, um, here you see uh, the same character twice, well, four characters twice. Um, one is the Japanese version, and the other is the Chinese version, but it's the same number because it represents the same idea, the same, it's the same character. It's, it's the same, yeah. Uh, which, is, which is a kind of worms because there was all kind of drama resulting from that. Uh, like Japanese and Chinese people insulting the Westerners because they don't understand uh, how it works really. Let's not talk about this because it, it's really funny, especially considering that uh, it was a bunch of Japanese, Korean, and Chinese people who did that in the first place. Uh, yeah. So we have abstract characters and we have numbers. The code point is the abstract number that uh, identifies the abstract character. The representation is how do we represent this abstract number. <coughs> So it's, it's not straightforward. That's why we have all these funny things. So the base case is, OK, we have this number. We put, I don't know, 32 bits, and we put the number inside. That's it. OK, that's UTF-32. You need four bytes per character, which is quite a waste, especially considering that uh, you will never need more than 21 bits anyway, because that's the the, the, the maximum amount uh, that's the, defined so far. Um, but that's straightforward. You have fixed uh, length. Uh, every character is has the same length. Everybody's happy. 
Um, then you have UTF-16, which um, is basically a legacy we, we have from, the, from version 1.0 when uh, everything was only 16-bit long and um, so, well, they, they discovered, uh, they decided afterwards that they needed uh, more, so they needed to somehow uh, handle the fact that so much software was around using uh, two, two bytes characters instead of uh, four. Uh, so uh, they, they invented this standard, which I will not cover now. I will just say that basically every character in the base, in the basic Mm, plain, so the first 64,000 um, characters uh, are represented with a single 16-bit um, uh, sequence, and all the others are represented with uh, two of those 16-bit sequences, so 32 bits again. And then we have UTF-8, which is the thing everybody should have been using since the beginning. Anyway, how does it work? Basically, the representation is exactly like that. Um, if the first bit of a, of a, of a byte is zero, then the, re the remaining seven bits are the code point. Which means that ASCII, so seven bit ASCII, is also valid UTF-8 and vice versa. So uh, you, you can take legacy programs that don't understand UTF-8 and uh, give them, I mean, you don't understand Unicode and give them UTF-8 uh, input if it's in, still in the ASCII region, it's exactly the same representation, which is nice. Then there, is, there are these other representations for all the rest of the characters. Basically it works like that. The first two bits the, um, are set to, the first, the first bits uh, are set to one. There is exactly um, as many bits set to one as uh, long is the, uh, the sequence. So in this case, two bits set to one, and that's zero to, to mark the end of the sequence, uh, of the marker sequence. And then the rest of the bits is used for uh, the value of the code point. And then all the continuation bytes are marked with a sequence one zero, which means, hey, I am the continuation of a multi-byte sequence. This means that in any case, no character is represented with more than four bytes anyway. And actually most characters in the base plan um, plane uh, are represented uh, with two or three um, bytes. In any case, in every four. Um, this this is very nice. Now, let's, let's see. Um, of course, you could argue that you could use um, four bytes to represent a low character. No, it's forbidden. Uh, it, uh, the only legal sequences are the one with the uh, least number of bits. Other sequences, are, other, other sequences are illegal or should be. There are some exploits because somebody uh, didn't put uh, checks and so basically some web servers mm, let you put dot, dot, slash, and so on because, mm, yeah. Um, okay, so why is it so nice? Okay, first it rep represents all of Unicode. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's backwards compatible with ASCII because, okay, in case of ASCII, it's just ASCII, but in case of um, high characters, so anything above 100, 127, uh, a legacy program might not know that that's a single character, but it will any, any, anyway handle it. Uh, the byte zero is guaranteed not to appear in any sequence, so uh, uh, null terminated strings still work. So you, you, legacy programs don't, don't, really don't have to worry about that. Um, it's very easy to scan forwards and backwards because you, know, you easily know when um, a byte is the beginning of the sequence. You easily 
know when a byte is the continuation of a sequence. Uh, so you can discover if there is some corruption going on, if the byte, if the character should be longer, uh, because it's I don't know five, uh, four, four bytes, and uh, you you get uh, another beginning of character in the middle, then you know that something has gone wrong. Um, you can recover uh, if. Uh, if you get random continuation around, you know that something's gone wrong somewhere because this should not happen. And if you scan backwards, you, you know where to stop because, um, yeah, if, as long as you, you just go backwards, as long as you get continuation, and then you find the, the beginning. Also, since the length of the character is determined in, in the first byte, you also know um, how to skip forwards. When, when looking for a given character, for example, if if you know if you see that character is four bytes long, then you, you, for the next character you just keep uh, uh, forwards four bytes, for example. Uh, okay, sometimes UTF representation of characters are bigger one byte than UTF sixteen. That's necessary because of how it's represented. So some some characters. Um, are represented with, with, with three bytes instead of the two needed for UTF-16. But I think that the disadvantages are not so big compared to the advantages you have. Um, questions? Why the waste of uh, bytes with the... Uh, could you go back like three slides? Why did they... What, what, uh, one and four, please. Well, that, that's, that's fine too. No, just wait. Okay. This very Why did they actually waste um, waste the byte at the second one? Why didn't they just say, okay, if there's a one at the first at the first time, then it's obviously a sequence. Why the one zero? Why didn't they uh, Why did they waste like two bytes on on each uh, line? Two bits. Two bits. Sorry. Why didn't Why Why didn't they say, okay, we always have if there's a multi-byte sequence, we always put the first one to a one, and then we have like <laughs> zero, zero if it's a two-byte one, zero, one, zero, one if it's a three-byte one, or one, one, zero for a four-byte one, and so on and so forth. Do you know why they wasted it? Because yeah, because, because, because uh, how do you actually do that then? I mean, if the first bit is zero, then it's the, the, the remaining seven bits are ASCII. Then okay, and that's and that's okay. Then you must start with one, right? Yeah. Okay, then that's, that's then that's how okay. do you, then if you have one, then what do you, what do you want to put a zero? No, that's a continuation. Yes, but that's the point. Why did they why did they put it that way? We could all, we could just say okay, the first bit defines if it's a multi sequence or not a multi sequence. Okay. Okay. So zero means no multi sequence, and one means we have a multi sequence. Okay. If we then define, okay, the first, the first byte that we receive with a one set, the next two bits, so bit number two and three, are for how many, are in, in a normal bit representation, how many sequences are following. So mm -hmm. instead of having, of wasting one byte with a, one bit with a two byte definition. Uh, and, then, and then how do you know if, 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 if a byte is uh, the, the beginning point is, of... The point is, they are, they, are differentiating, they are differentiating between, uh, at the second byte, they have the one, zero. Yes, that's a continuation. Byte. Yes. That's a continuation, that's right. But the point is that if we have an error in it, mm -hmm. and we, for example, from a multi-sequence multi um, mm -hmm. definition, we lose the first byte mm -hmm. due to some yeah. connection problem. Yeah. Then the argument was, okay, now that we have the second byte, we know that there's a one zero. Oh, it's a continuation, so obviously we lost something. So yeah. this current character is lost due yes. to some reason. I think that um, if this character is lost, then it should be okay to just have a multi-sequence byte and just kill this complete multi-sequence byte. So the continuation definition is actually not necessary, in my opinion. Why should we differentiate between the start of a multi-sequence byte, which we could lose, or the continuation, which we could use as well? 
the whole multiplied character is lost. Yeah, because that from the con continuation, you could have a pattern which indicates the start of a new sequence. So in, in your approach, you said that if you lose the beginning of the sequence, you would just delete the whole sequence. But what yes. if the whole text consists of sequences in Japanese, for example? Uh, okay. Then you would lose the whole text. Okay. It doesn't work. Also, that, that's that's a key point. That's a key point of UTF-8. If you if you lose something, you can always continue successfully to decode the text. Yeah, I didn't think that there should that there could be actually more than uh, more than a multi sequence byte. Yeah, that's and right. there are texts in which most of it is multi sequence. Uh, yeah. For example, think something within Russian. For example, will will, will all be uh, a two byte sequence because it's not. Yeah, uh, because it's not used. Okay. Exactly. Okay.